The mood in the National Assembly from yesterday when the federal lawmakers got back to work showed that the men business and today it was about that and basically what they were talking about from yesterday up on this, to this evening is a security issue in the land so lawmakers in the senate are calling for an urgent restructuring review and reorganization of the country's current security architecture as they begin deliberations on the matter the senators say various local and regional responses to the security challenges by way of self-help initiatives such as civilian jtf Hisba and recently Amatekun are mainly expressions of the people's desperation and disappointment with the failure of the state security architecture to protect them. In his own contribution, the Senate Minority Leader, Senator Enyinai Abaribe, asked President Muhammad Buhari to resign over the inability of his government to solve the security challenges in the country. He asked that Nigerians voted the APC government into power after the promise to address insecurity. Let me allow you to listen to Senator Enyinai Abaribe. to tell you, Mr. President, if you didn't insist that we will not be partisan, I would have called out the presidential spokesman, Femi Adeshino, who, when the Khan leaders complained about the killing of a priest, he turned around and said that the Khan was acting like a political party. Now that we are talking about it here, let me hear him say that all of us are acting like a political party. When somebody is complaining about these incessant deaths in this country, Nigeria did not elect the IG. We did not elect the chief of staff. We did not elect the joint chiefs. We did not elect the national security advisor. We elected the government of APC in 2015 and re-elected re them in 2019. The reason why we re-elected them was that they continued to tell us that because they had the key to security, and the whole Nigeria voted them in in 2015, and I agree with that. And I'm saying, Mr. President, when you want to deal with a matter, you go to the head. So we will go to the government and ask this government to resign because they can no longer do anything in this country. You heard him there. So yesterday, the Senate President, Ahmed Lawan, said the security situation has deteriorated. Those are his words. And in the House of Representatives today, they are asking that the President sacks his service chief. They are asking also that the IG of police also should be sacked because of the security situation in the land. Let's get talking about this. We look at several aspects of this and get to look at the political angle. Uh, technically, what can we do? Because tonight on the program, we are also seeking solutions to our security program. Wherever you may be watching the, uh, the program, whether you a Nigerian living in Nigeria or outside of the country, the issue of security is a major business, and that's what gets us talking. Let me start the conversation tonight by talking to a former uh, military officer, Colonel Tony Iam, joins us in the studio. Thank you so much for coming on tonight. Thank you, thank you. Um, I think so bad. There are, we are actually in a failed state. Why would you say so? Why would I say so? I would say so because to travel between Abuja and Kaduna, where Kaduna is where we have the biggest military base, is the heart of the military in Nigeria. Kaduna and the capital is unpassable freely. That is an indication of a failed state. Two, the president himself yesterday said he was shocked about the state of the of the the threat or the security that indicates that there's a failure because the president has all the access to communication to the intelligence and is a former general if he as a commander in chief says he's shocked about the state of security then we are really in danger two three what I do not, what worries me is the lack of sincerity of purpose. For example, we are being challenged everywhere in the country, and it's so clear to anybody 
that you cannot continue with what I call the occupational, the colonial type of running military, which is they were, the military and the police were to serve the colonial power. We cannot continue with that. We have to extend security to include human security. The comment made by the spokesman of the president, Femi Adesina, was insensitive because if he does realize that people are being killed, and is, this is not time to play partisan politics. Clearly, what I'm saying, one of the ideas they are bringing in to, 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 to confuse people is the, the word community policing. Community policing is a practice of policing. It's a strategy which is practiced at all tiers of policing. That is, by the federal government, in the case of um, other countries, by the state government, and by local government police. In other words, it's a way of policing. It is not, it is a verb, community policing. It is not a noun. It is not a, po you, you, don't, you don't have a community policing. You have a community police strategy, not a community police establishment. What am I saying? The issue is this. The people in Abuja want to keep their empire. The IG wants to keep on being the, the whole police boss. No. Nigeria needs to devolve the police. Nigeria, in every country, in the US, in Canada, in Australia, policing is state police, is state affair. It is not federal. We've been carrying on this ignorance for too long. And if you look at the Constitution, the Constitution is quite clear. And those who framed the Constitution knew what they were saying. Security is to government. It didn't say federal government. And if you're a government, like our veteran Olufale has been saying all along, if you are a government, you have to have the enabling power to enforce your laws. So the idea of having only the federal government as government in Nigeria has to just continue. We need to have federal police, uh, state, state police. Uh, Colonel uh, Iam, I mean, yes. you have been in the military. Yes. If a general yes. who got out of the military sure. cannot secure this country, like some, the allusion they are making yes. in the National Assembly, yes. who else can? That's, if you go and check, policy making, what Abari, the senator was saying, which I will use the same language, what he's saying is that it is a policy maker that dictates the way. It, the IG is not in a position to, to, de, to determine how he will be used. It is the policy maker that determines. So the IG cannot be the one pushing the argument of, of state policy. As, 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 the, as, the, as the problem got to the point that uh, a senator or lawmaker should ask the president to resign. No, or the government I, to I, resign. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't use that word, but what I would say, his frustration and the frustration of Nigerians is that we are in a failed state, insecurity all over the place. What we need to do, is really, we are in a state of war. Two things I've said earlier. The, the system we have now only has security to protect the states and the big men, the regime. There is no, the thinking does not include human security. That's one. Thirdly, we also moved from, we are not in a conventional warfare, we are in a war, whereby we are making a mistake that the police can deal with the kind of violence we have. The police cannot deal with that. I mean, so in, in that sense, uh, when they say declare a state of uh, emergency or national security, yes. has it gotten to that point too? I wouldn't, you see, it, we, throw, we throw words about. What I'm, I need for, we need actions. And the actions we need now, first, is for us to stop playing partisan politics and the president to rise up to his responsibility. Well, if you were the president, what would you do differently? First, I would, I would change the service chiefs. So you are, you are, in, you, you are, you are agreeing with the, uh, the lawmakers? Say, I, would, I would change the service chief. Would you sack the I IG too? I would change the service. No, this IG, to be fair to the IG, the IG has been different from all. He's done his best but he's being controlled by some other people. That's why you see him, but he's tried his best. The service chiefs are long overdue and they're not producing the results, so they need other people to take place. So thirdly, the president has to see that you cannot carry on this mediocre way of thinking that the center can deal with the whole security. 
That was why the statement made by the Senate president is right. We have to move away from centralized security to going by the constitution, which in other words, the government, the governors, local governments have a role to play in the constitution, uh, in, in security. As it, see, as it is right now, uh, would you say, because I mean, from what we're saying, I heard today, uh, would you say that things have really gotten in out of the hands of the government of the day in terms of securing the lives of, and property of Nigerians? Obviously, if you, you if, I mean, you can see when General T.Y. Danjuma said everybody should go and self-defense, people shouted him down. But it's now a prophet because what he said is so clear. You see, the right to bear arms when government fail is the right of a man. Because, well, well if you look at it, uh, Colonel Ian, uh, what we experienced about seven, eight years ago, yes. or about ten years ago, were uh, records of Boko Haram, holding territory, several local government areas, sure, sure. and when uh, you 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 entering into Abuja, the nation's capital, is even a fear when government cannot conduct simple state affairs or ceremony uh, in the city center uh, where uh, you want to do uh, an independence celebration, you have to do it right in the villa and all lot of that. Uh, and you compare it with what we have presently. Would you say things have improved? Things haven't improved. What has improved is this. People are, th people are looking at explosion. They forget what is happening is an implosion. Implosion is the art of uh, guerrilla warfare and, insult and what Boko Haram is doing. We are increasingly being proved that our army, I fear that we don't end up like Central African Republic, where the non-state actors forces defeated the military. And when they defeated the military, they pushed away the ethnic minority that came in to colonize them. And the all the non state actors are fighting themselves and they're still fighting today. What am I saying? The political elites, the Dangotes, the Jimovia, should know that their businesses will be destroyed if there is no security. So the president needs to get his act together. He needs to ask for more funding if it's necessary. And he needs to allow the local the states. To, be, to participate. You see, the cry the, gov the governor of Borno has been making, it's indicative that the, the, the central government is not working. I mean, if, uh, for example, the government of the PDP under Jonathan uh, was voted out, and the government of APC, led by M President Muhammad Buhari, came in saying, we will fix insecurity in Nigeria. Now, we have a general. I remember at the time that the leader of the APC, Bolati Nubu, yes. at the time said, look, yes. uh, I, he made, uh, he gave uh, an instance of, uh, in gone. the United States, where, where the general uh, had come to rescue, but this is a general said, that has come to rescue Nigeria. But if the security situation persists, where do we go? He said it's a de Gaulle. The, the point is this. General Muhammadu Buhari means well, but his age, his health, other combinations of things, and the way the, the higher secu national security management is structured is such that he's not properly being guided rightly. First, we need a much more qualified national security advisor because. Than Babangana Mungunu that we have? A former general in the army? That's the problem. National security advisor it not, doesn't have to be an army general, doesn't have to be a retired person. It, it needs an advisor who is an interface between the military and all the national security indications. An intelligence community. Indeed. And the national security intelligence. And remember, intelligence is almost 80%, 70% in uh, research. Now, if without research, without understanding what is going on, for example, people want restructuring so that they can be involved in their own security. Is that the answer? Indeed. Look, without not not, not 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 a pardon shift that the Senate President is asking our security architecture. No, you see, not rejigging the it's, it's, security. It's, it's, it's much more than regime change. What we need is a system change. In other words, to go back to the state of where the federations of Nigeria 
have a say and a role to play in their security. So this is not about Buhari. This is not about Jonathan. This is not about PDP or APC. It's about a factor that we need to change the system. Indeed. It is, it's, Do it's, you think the President Buhari has a political will to make that happen? He, he has no choice. If, no, don't. If, I mean, there, there, there is a situation where you are, you have no option, yes. or and a situation where do you have the capacity, political capacity, to make it happen? Does he have the political will? You see, a country gets the leader it deserves. Since he is elected by Nigerians, we give him, we have to give him the chance, and I think it is a high time President Buhari realizes that he has to be much more sincere in the way he deals with things. At the moment, the perception is that he's too fully inclined. And as such, he's Would that be fair to say? It would be fair because, can I, I have the evidence to prove that? Where you have this head of the security arms, 75% are from his own kings and folk. And some of his kings and folk are the ones who are a threat in some part of the country. He needs to correct that. And in fact, by the way, as far back as 2016, I wrote President Muhammad Buhari to warn him that if he doesn't deal with the full any matter, it will be his downfall. Hmm. Well, those are strong words there, Connelly. I did write. I, I wrote a letter to him, 2016. All right. Uh, let's take a breather. When we come back, we get some other perspective. We're still on the issue of national security. What are you saying about the security situation? It all involves all of us. Get talking, get to our Twitter handle and tweet to us. We get a, a, a breather, and when we come back, we talk more. Stay with us. We'll be right back. We have critically looked at everything and uh, we are satisfied with the progress we are making. We are satisfied with the support that the federal government is giving the armed forces and other security agencies. Our appeal is for all Nigerians and other stakeholders to join hands with the armed forces of Nigeria and other security and intelligence agencies to ensure that our country is secured rather than looking at other methods that are likely going to negate uh, the uh, national policing and um, community policing uh, policy that the federal government has approved. What we expect is for all stakeholders, local governments, state governments, other stakeholders to join hands with us and uh, let us work together to ensure that our country is secured. I want to tell you, Mr. President, if you didn't insist that we will not be partisan, I would have called out the presidential spokesman, Femi Adesino, who, when the Khan leaders complained about the killing of a priest, he turned around and said that the Khan was acting like a political party. Now that we are talking about it here, let me hear him say that all of us are acting like a political party. When somebody is complaining about these incessant deaths in this country, Nigeria did not elect the IG. We did not elect the chief of staff. We did not elect the joint chiefs. We did not elect the national security advisor. We elected the government of APC in 2015 and re-elected re them in 2019. The reason why we re-elected them was that they continued to tell us that because they had the key to security and the whole Nigeria voted them in in 2015 and I agree with that and I'm saying Mr. President when you want to deal with a matter you go to the head so we will go to the government and ask this government to resign because they can no longer do anything in this country
Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. Let's give you a summary, an outlook of what we're talking about tonight and what has happened over the last few days. So today, uh, we see a lot of budding on the president, President Buhari. Uh, a tough job that he has on his hands today, isn't it? Because if you look at it, the last of fever outbreak is out there. Transparency International has come out with a report to say, look, there is a low performance in the fight against corruption. And look at it. The security situation in the country is a daunting challenge for the president, the number one man sitting there. So he's not perhaps a happy man as we speak. So these are some of the issues that are coming out today from the National Assembly. The, the National Assembly is saying, declare as an emergency on our national security, and that's what we're talking about. Senators, President Buhari, to declare emergency on our national security. And the House of Reps are also speaking. They say, sack the service chiefs. They want to ask the IG to appear before them and tell them the state of affairs in terms of our national security. This man, the Senate minority, leader, the leader of opposition in the National Assembly, Senator Eyinaya Abaribe, has told the government of President Buhari to resign because they is saying that the promise the government of APC made to Nigerians, they've not fulfilled it. Those are the words of Senator Eyinaya Abaribe. And now, this is what is uh, on the lips of everyone, the issue of security. And the Senate President yesterday said, security in the country has deteriorated. We see banditry in some parts of the country. We see the issues of kidnapping. We see insurgency in the part of the Northeast region. And the President said yesterday, we will now be harder on them. Those are the bandits he's talking to. He said, I was taken aback by what is happening in the Northwest and other parts of the country. That's the word of President Muhammad Buhari. That is a summary of what we are talking about tonight. And I'm speaking with a retired military officer, Colonel Tony Iyam. Thank you so much for, for talking to us. At this point, if you were President Muhammad Buhari and you heard what the lawmakers are saying, what would you do? A lot of uh, experts have given about three options. One of them said that he will appear before the National Assembly and give them a state of the nation address. Another person has said that this tomorrow morning or tonight, he will sack, he should sack his uh, security, uh, his service chiefs. Another person has said he will give to the country a new concept or strategy in national security and how to secure the nation. If you are President Buhari, which of the options would you pick tonight? The option I would go for is a holistic option. The holistic option being the immediate action is sack the, the service chiefs. Then the, short, the intermediate action is immediately uh, ask for funding to expand the, the shape and size of the armed forces in number. Then the, the, the strategic ob uh, uh, objective or option is that to restructure the country, to give everybody in the country a role to play in security. Security, we must get away from the idea of security being the security of the state and the security of the regime or public officials. We have to take account the human security and we must not be as insensitive as the uh, Femi Adishina had been. Because a, a lot of people, that word restructuring, some politicians don't want to hear it because they believe that it has been highly politicized. But, I mean, in, in serious term, if you want to pick out the issue or the matter of national security and how the restructuring in peace or in piecemeal can address uh, issues of uh, security, restructuring how it can affect security, what would you do? What will you tackle? No, I've told you that we, it has to be holistic. There's an immediate action, which is to sack the service chiefs and then bring in new hands. While doing that, put a budget in the National Assembly, which is, we are in a war for more funding to expand the, the scope of the, of the armed forces. I'm not suggesting but, that but, there should not... again, in, what would in, you use the money for? Pardon? What would you use the money for? There's a need for the number of the people in the armed forces compared to our population is too low. So you will recruit more? We recruit more. But recruitment does not take, is not immediate. It cannot be immediate. During the, the Civil War, People, officers were trained for three months. People like Tanko Ayuba, you heard. Shagaya, you were heard. They were trained for only three months to be officers. You can. Another, another challenge is that military hardware are not easy to come by. The countries, the people who sell military hardware don't sell it off the shelf. No, no. 
that bet you cannot just fold your arms. The first thing I've said, sack the service chiefs, then employ the hands, and then go all out and get the, the and stop going to a place like Pakistan or a place to go and buy arms. Go to the country like America. And well, if you if, the if, ones if, that if, we wanted to buy from America, it, it has not been delivered. No, because the ones they, they, they no, paid for. because the helicopters and no, I mean, because you, you because, because the Americans dictate that there is in search of purpose. Really? Yes. You think we should not do business with America again? No, 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 no. I'm saying in charge of purpose by our our, our our government in the sense that how could you have a situation where you have the situation in northeast and northwest? Now, and then you don't, you, you, you've not declared the, the Fulani, armed Fulani, you've not declared them terrorists, but you've declared that. you say Fulani, because we need to be careful with the use of the word yes. uh, Fulani, because yes. I mean, not all headsmen are Fulanis. Not Fulani, all Fulanis are headmen. headmen. I am del so, I'm deliberate. You have to profile a criminal. Well, when you are doing an ethnic profiling, that's, it's not ethnic, bro. No, no, no. Because, no, no, I mean, no, no, no. It's not an ethnic. Not, not all ethnic are full and easy. Um, what I'm, what I, what I have said is this: when you are, when you are profiling a crime, you, 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 you be, they would say, a, 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 who murdered somebody? A black man, a white man. They don't say you don't do that, because the challenge we have is that we have a challenge whereby even the houses in Zamfara are being killed. In fact. There have been more killings in Zamfara until this governor came than what has happened anywhere else. Just a moment. Um, I understand that we are being joined now by uh, Mr. Aliyu Abdullahi, a lawyer and a spokesperson at the presidency. Thank you so much, Mr. Aliyu Abdullahi, for joining us tonight on the program. A very serious matter we are discussing tonight, and a lot of Nigerians are talking, first and foremost. Um, Senator Yinaya Abaribi has asked that the president should resign, the government of President Buhari should resign because of what he says, the failure of this government to deliver security which they promised. Your thoughts? Well, thank you, Sharon, for having me. Uh, I feel the call by Senator, the minority, the minority leader in the Senate is not surprising, considering that he's, uh, uh, he's a member of opposition and uh, such things can come out from someone like him. So it's not surprising to actually uh, hear him make that call. It's not um, the, the issue of security, or let me say the resurgence of most of the issues that we're having, is not something that anyone wants, not this president, not the executive branch, definitely not the Senate themselves. So, of course, to, to think that one will say that this is totally the fault of the president, I mean, it's outrageous. Yes, he was elected to provide, uh, to protect lives and properties. That's true. They always forget the legislative house that they are also part of a government. The government is divided into three. So it's a failure on Nigerians, as far as I'm concerned, all of us. Security is the responsibility of every one of us. The president, the governors, the citizens, every one of us. So that is number one, uh, 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 one, one, one thing I want to say. And secondly, I think we should not play politics when it comes to issues of security. You know, rather we should try to find a way uh, to cooperate with the government and on best way to fight the insecurity we are seeing that is emanating. And let's not forget also, there are quite some number of things that the government, even as they are currently fighting the resurgence of this insurgency and some of the banditry situation, they are winning some of these battles. For example, the SAS a few days ago killed a number of the Boko Haram terrorists, but we don't, people don't loud it out. Rather, it is when we hear the negative one that people concentrate on. Even as I'm speaking today, yesterday, the president has given an order of serious air bombardment, you know, on locations that are, are being uh, occupied by these terrorists. 
There are a lot of actions. The president is not even uh, 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 having his rest because every, you know, day or every hour of the day, he is meeting on issues of security to see how the administration can combat this new menace or the resurgence. And uh, uh, if I if I may if I may, one, uh, Mr. Forget. Abdullahi, uh, apologies. Let me come in. These are some of the worries that uh, the National Assembly, the lawmakers are having. They say, look, we have been dealing with these issues in the same manner, and we're getting nowhere in the sense that things are getting worse that the spate of this violence increasingly across the land and so these are some of the worries that look for example the president should take decisive action on on uh, rejigging uh, the security architecture of the land for senator Ayunaya e. abaribe for example said this is the premise in which the buhari government campaigned to nigerians and when things are not delivered after a first four years going into the second term and is almost a year that the government should go let me okay let me say this one shall we say should we actually say that in the last four years the first term of this administration should we say that this government didn't try in fighting the security the insecurity issue was the was this was the situation the same that we made in 2015 and considering in uh, in 2019 when another election was held in abuja here Shewun, where i am currently sitting in your studio there uh, was bombing going on left right and center in kaduna kano name it boko haram's wall all was almost taking over the northwest and the capital city there was bombing in un office here and people going to mocks and churches they have to be searched you can't even go near one kilometer before they stop to you and start screening you now the situation is not the same but yes we agree i agree in particular that we are now beginning to see a resurgence of what is to happen before president bahari dedicated a serious attention on the fight against insecurity and he is going to do it again and don't forget the mandate is the commanded is not even up to a year we are just how many months into the second term for someone to call you it's like judging you before you completed your mandate your term of mandate that you have felt already when you, he already when he still has additional three years plus for you to judge him on whether he has felt on one of the key areas he has campaigned on and to be honest, you know, this is where I'm trying, what I'm trying to say. Fighting security, insecurity has to be taken into a multi-dimensional approach. It's not only the military aspect. We have to also look at the economic aspect of fighting insecurity. And we also have to look at the citizen involvement and also other leadership level, like the governors. What can they do? And even the issue of community uh, policing that the government is really trying to introduce now. There are, it's a multifaceted approach that we have to consider. Uh, Mr. Mr. Abdullah, blame, apologies again. Uh, are you saying that maybe the lawmakers are emotional about their, the situation? Well, it could be a combination of emotion, one, and also it could be how they perceive things, how they see it. But what I'm saying is, instead of saying you are calling for someone's resignation, who's, you want to judge him on the entire promise he made, uh, uh, only in, in less than one year, to the time that he, uh, he was elected by Nigerians, I think that is not fair on the person of the president. You well, have you, to you, you agree, at least You, you agree him. that uh, the, the kind of energy the president used at some point in his first four years, maybe he can use that again uh, this time around. Uh, would you agree with those who say he has failed in, uh, uh, in one uh, aspect of uh, fighting insecurity in Nigeria and he needs to reject? Would you say that he has failed and he need, needs a new strategy? Um, see, uh, taking or getting a new strategy to apply in a 
as a solution that to some challenges does not necessarily mean you have failed that the existing or the current one has failed it could mean that you just needed an added approach to what is currently being done. So there is nothing also for me, there is nothing wrong in people saying that, okay, we can move some pieces up. Let's assume these are chairs, uh, 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 ch 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 chairs, I, uh, uh, this thing on the board, on the board. Move some pieces of these chairs so that maybe perhaps we can get a different outcome, a better outcome than, than the one we are currently getting or the one that we have gotten in the last uh, uh, four years. There is nothing wrong in that. Mr. 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 Abdullah, Mr. Abdullah, uh, let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me get, let me get this. Uh, coming, sorry, apologies. Coming, let me get this question. Just, just a moment, just a moment. Like, let me get I this land. question to you. Apologies, please. Uh, get this instance and uh, maybe you, you can speak in that regard. Remember, that one of the strategies and the campaign points that the president and his colleagues in the APC preached on in 2015 was that they can handle security. And it was believed that the government of Gulag Jonathan was voted out because, according to them, they could not handle it. Now, with the way and manner things are, you think that Nigerians are not rethinking about the situation of things, and particularly their decision. Do you think so? Are you worried about that? You see, no, not really about the politics side of it. I'm worried about uh, some of the resurgence of the insecurity challenges that we are seeing today. Yes, every Nigerian has uh, reason to worry. But to compare, let me tell you, uh, you it's, it, the situations are not the same, you can't compare it. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I try to give you a, 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 a history Pre-2015 when we came in, and what of 10 after that in the first administration, in the first four years. Yes, now we can see that something is being done. And I'm telling you, this president has the commitment, the right ability, the capacity to also fight it like he fought it in the first time. You will see this. All these new challenges, insecurity challenges, they will be defeated again. Strategies, whether uh, 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 the security chiefs are rejected or not, at least we know that he has the capacity to defeat this insecurity and, he will be, and it will be done. And let me ask you one question. When uh, the former president, you know, Dr. Goodluck Jonathan, felt on the insecurity level, did anyone, the senator, uh, uh, the, the minority leader, the current minority leader, did he ask him to resign? Didn't he wait until, didn't we wait as Nigerians collectively until we get to the polls and All then right. decided? Uh, well, we, we, we are, we're due for another break, president. but I must sincerely thank did. you, uh, Mr. Abdullah Aliyu. But can I tell you, Ian, we have about 10 seconds to our next break and conclude this conversation on national security. Your final word. The final word is that. This is a better spokesman than, at least he's sensitive to the feelings of Nigerians, the last spokesman. But essentially, President Buhari has to rise up to his responsibility. Otherwise, he will leave with no legacy. The legacy he will leave is that he'll be seen as a tribalist. Colonel Tony Iyam, a, a former military officer, thank you so much for coming on tonight. And Mr. Aliyu Abdullah, a lawyer and a spokesperson in the presidency, thank you so much for coming on tonight, gentlemen. Well, we shift focus when we come back from this break, and we head to the crisis rocking on your state local government council. Counter order on uh, the chairman in that state. Some are sacked, some are coming back. What exactly is happening in your state? We get you in on the issue when we talk from this break as well. Join us again.